surprise. That's what we're talking about both yesterday and today. Only this time we're going to turn it over to the defensive side of the football. Good morning to you. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Dan Kovacevic of DK Pittsburgh Sports. This is Daily Shot of Steelers. Comes your way bright and early every weekday morning. If you're into hockey and or baseball, I also offer up Daily Shots of Penguins and Pirates right where you found this. Yesterday, I identified three surprise players, in my eyes anyway, on the offense. And they were Anthony McFarland at running back, Rico Bussey at wide receiver, and Rashad Coward at left guard, running with the ones. Today, I'm going to give you two surprises and one player who really shouldn't be a surprise, but I think is going to surprise some people. I'll save him for last. The first of my surprises, though, is James Pierre. And maybe he could kind of fit into a similar bracket, meaning he shouldn't have surprised anyone, given that he overtook Justin Lane on the depth chart in the latter part of the 2020 season. And he did so on merit, not just because Lane had fallen off. He just outperformed him both in games and in practices. And coaches will monitor and value practices almost as much as what they see from you on Sundays. Pierre is testament to that. Pierre has worked his way toward being Number one on the right outside cornerback depth chart, if you presume that Cam Sutton could end up inside and all that stuff ends up getting really complicated. Bottom line is, Pierre just keeps making plays. And he's making them against the Steelers' main receivers. He's not, like, just going out there in backups versus backup drills and making hay. He's chasing Deontay Johnson around. He's chasing Chase Claypool down the field. He jumped over Claypool on one particular play and whacked the ball away from behind or what should have been a touchdown. Really impressive stuff, and he's been doing it day after day after day, drill after drill after drill. Now, he's got to get it done in preseason games. He's got to get it done Thursday night in Canton. He's got to get it done in the three exhibitions that follow. But he's making his presence known, and he's leaving the Steelers with more options for their general secondary coverage than maybe even what they thought they'd have coming into this camp. So good for him. My second surprise guy is also in this same mix, and that's Antoine Brooks Jr. Now, Brooks isn't going to be someone who's going to jump out at you maybe the way Mike Hilton did when Hilton first got going, but that's the goal. (laughs) That's absolutely what's being set up here by the coaches and by the player. I asked Brooks to what extent the coaches are challenging him to be Hilton 2.0, and, man, he didn't exactly hesitate with the answer. I look at Mike's game all the time. Uh, one of the best wrestlers in you know, the Tuxedo Steelers uniform. Uh, he taught me a lot while he was here, uh, and I appreciate him being, you know, I call him my OG, so I appreciate him being a a, a big brother figure to me when when I was here and trying to get the nickel spot or trying to do, you know, just just really trying to learn our defense. Especially the blitzing component that stands out? Of course, of course, especially that, you know, that's my physicality in the game. I really like the blitz, you know, blitz, cover, you know, Mike did it all. I really just want to, you know, fill in his shoes, you know, maybe, maybe not. Mostly maybe. Good for him. You know, 99 times out of 100, when an athlete is asked a question like the one that you heard me pose to Brooks there, they'll kind of cringe a little bit and say, no, I just got to be myself. I don't 
I don't need to or want to mimic anyone else's play. No way. This dude knows. He knows what he's got to do to get on the football field for this team. He's got to be Hilton. And, uh, you know, to his credit, he's showing well enough in that regard so far. But keep saying this, he's going to have to show it in games as well. This portion of Daily Shot of Steelers is brought to you by our title sponsor at Point Park University. Choose from nearly 100 career-focused programs leading to bachelor's, master's, and doctoral degrees at Point Park. Learn more about this at Point Park's downtown Pittsburgh campus or check them out online at pointpark.edu. My last guy, my last surprise guy on defense, I'm almost embarrassed to say this, but I guarantee you that when we get to Buffalo and Alex Highsmith has a terrific game against the Bills and he's back there pressuring Josh Allen and forcing him out of the pocket, maybe even bringing him down, people will be surprised. Why? Well, because Bud Dupree had raised that bar. And the greatest fear that the nation as a whole, that's capital N, has about the Steelers. I think even greater than the offensive line, which is nuts, is that the defense won't be able to compensate for the loss of Bud. Bud has had no bigger proponent in Pittsburgh than the guy you're listening to. And that goes back to when that was not a popular sentiment. I was always a believer in Bud. And I'll continue to be that. I think he's going to be an absolute stud in Nashville. And I I hope that he is. Terrific dude on top of everything else. But I also watched Highsmith come in and play the position instantly at a higher level, at a much higher level than what Bud did at the same phase of his experience. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that Highsmith's going to end up achieving the same ceiling that Bud has. Bud is an absolute freak physically. But it does mean that Highsmith comes with a greater degree of polish, and that matters for this specific conversation that matters because Highsmith does not look like he'll require any additional training on the job, which is mostly what he got in 2020 and still graded out pretty well, even even when tasked with dropping back in coverage, even other than one play that I'm sure everybody's going to mention again and again and again when it comes to sealing the edge on the rush. He's been outstanding. This will surprise people. This should not surprise people. Highsmith should not have made my list. Let's hope that by the next time I try one of these, I won't have to mention his name again. When we come back, just one question. Time for just one question, and that's brought to you on this program always by the personal injury law firm of Luxembourg, Garbett, Kelly, and George, LGKG. They represent people who are hurt in car accidents, who need assistance with workers' comp, who filed medical malpractice claims. The attorneys at LGKG take pride in doing what they say they're going to do. They've been keeping promises in our region for over 80 years. Learn more about them at lgkg.com or by calling 888-842-5454. Question comes from Matthew Bianchi, who asks, in order for the Steelers to succeed, which is more important, the offensive line or the defensive line? I I guess there's such a reflexive tendency to, to answer with the offensive line that I'll probably end up there anyway. But in trying to respect 
your question is more of an overarching thing. I'm not going to downplay the importance of the defensive line being as good as it was in 2020. And that's asking a lot, and I don't think it should be ignored. Cam Hayward has to continue playing at a like a, a Hall of Fame-type level into his 30s. Tyson Alulu, who graded out every bit as highly as both Cam and Stefan Tuitt, and we saw how much he means to the Steelers' defense when he was out, he needs to do the same thing. And Steph needs to stay healthy again, which is something that he obviously hadn't been able to do before last season. If any of those guys goes down, whether it's in terms of performance or health, I am here to tell you they do not have replacements. Chris Wormley can, you know, fill in in a pinch, but he's not going to be someone who's capable of picking up two, three games for you and performing at any kind of meaningful level. And the rest of these guys, Carlos Davis, Isaiah Bugs, we're still waiting on them. We're still waiting for the first affirmation of their impact. So I've talked an awful lot about the offensive line. You're the first person, Matthew, that offered me the, the opportunity here to go on a little bit about the other side of it. Because it is a worry. Understand, every position is a worry when it comes to depth. That applies to all 32 NFL teams. No one, no one looks at their depth chart and says, yep, we're all set, everything's good. It doesn't matter who gets hurt, everything's just A-OK. Nobody does that. They're certainly not going to do it in Pittsburgh. But I think where the defensive line is concerned, combined with their age and Steph's health history, and what's behind all three of them, yeah, yeah, that's that's troubling. And now you can compound that by factoring in also that two of the other three teams in the division, Baltimore and Cleveland, prefer to run the football. And you'd better be stout up front. So everything kind of has to go right on the defensive line as well. Offensive line, like I said, we've, we've been up, down, and sideways over all of that. Which one is more important? Ask me on whatever day one of them seems to be having a really downward trajectory. That'll be my answer. I appreciate the question, Matthew. I appreciate everybody listening to Daily Shot of Steelers. We'll do this again tomorrow. Hey, everybody, thanks for listening. Please subscribe to our DK Pittsburgh Sports channel, and don't forget to hit the bell to get notified every time we post a new video or podcast.